My name is Tyson. I'm 23 years old and I have the most weirdest bar experience ever. I will have to be pouring out. I'm not a, a big drinker, but I don't mind going to the bars with my friends to hang out and just socialize. I usually go with my son and my friends to the bars after work or even during the weekends. So, even so. But this particular experience happened to me during the summer of 2022 and is actually is located in a, a decent sized town in the state of Oregon. But I'm not going to exact, give exact location because of for my privacy and the others. So anyways, this particular summer, it was my, my friend Tony's 22nd birthday. And Tony, he's gay. And I don't mind that because he's actually a very great guy to hang around with. I mean, he's a little bit goofy and just a great guy. We had known each other for quite a long time, actually. And since most of our friends was either working or out of town this weekend, so Tony really reached out to me and asked if I was up to something this weekend. And I said, no, no plans at all. Why? Then he told me that it was his birthday, which I had totally forgot. But he then asked if I wanted to go away with him for the bar to just celebrate his birthday. And I was like, why not? So that weekend, I believe it was on a Saturday, we actually went to a gay bar that he usually goes to for most of the time. I actually been there. But I'm not just saying this, I'm actually 100% straight. But I'm not against the gay people at all. I actually been there a couple times before, and the staff there and some of the regulars actually knows me. Well, at least it isn't well enough, since they know me that I am a friend of Tony. And I actually had start, actually became friends with some of the staff and even some of the regulars. So, even so, this weekend when we walked in, some of the staff actually yell out, Hey, Tony, the birthday guy! They all know that it was his birthday since he actually paid their turns out that they're telling them about it. Then they saw me, Tyson! Welcome, dude! So, me and, Ty me and Tony went to the bar, which is to grab a beer and sit down for a bit, talking. While after that, he decided to go, start, go around to talk to some other, the other guys. So, I was sitting by the bar, just talking with one of the bar bartenders by the name Carlos. Carlos was actually also straight, like myself, but he didn't mind working there. While I was sitting at the bar talking to, with Carlos, a young guy, probably say maybe or only a few years older than me, sat down and started talking to me. And I had even seen him before there, but he explained that he is actually new in town and that he is also gay. And he asked me if I had been to this bar before, and I said, a couple of times actually, with my friend Tony. And I also had to tell him that I wasn't gay. I was straight, but only there with, as a friend, uh, only there with my friend Tony. And it was also his birthday. So he asked me to go with him to the bar, and he didn't mind if I was straight or not. But we actually have a good conversation. He explained that his name was Julian, that he was 23 years old, that he was only one year older than me and Tony. I mean, even though I'm straight, but he, is, uh, he was not a bad, good, good, bad looking guy. I mean, have to admit that. I mean, I'm sure probably Tony would dating him if he had the opportunity. But since Tony wasn't looking for any serious, and I wasn't even looking for it at all. But I had to be just pulling out. At the time, while well, I'm actually still, I was actually just recently start dating this girl by the name Eva. As me and Julian were still talking, Tony walked up to us and asked, Oh, you made a new friend, I see. I nodded and said, that, yeah. And he introduced himself to, to Julian and he did the same. And after a while, Julian asked if we wanted to play some pool. And, but since Tony said, Nah, I was to hang out with some other people there. But Tyson, why you not you go to play pool with him? He's a good player. And I was just to say I'm an average, not like a 
professional like that. So why not? So while me and with Julian were playing pool, I did notice that Julian tried to flirt with me despite telling him that I was not into guys and I actually had a girlfriend at the time and still with her. But he brushed it off and just he wasn't trying to to date it or try to flirt with me. But then uh, after a while, I actually start to feel a bit uncomfortable around him because he started to make re remarks about women is probably not good as men supposed to be at. And and if guys are uh, walking to a gay bar, which not saying that they are not gay, but they're probably secretly gay or they're bisexual. I was getting a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit upset about this. And when I mentioned that I have a girlfriend by the name Eva, and he asked if I could if I could show him a photo of me on Eva, and I did, and he actually said that I did look was good looking in a photo, but when he put a statement that Ava looked not as as a person I should be with, when I asked what he actually meant by it, he said I should not be with a woman, and he should I probably would be with a man. A good-looking man like me should probably be a good-looking man, like himself. I actually took that as offensive, but I was calm, cool. I told him a little more, more as professional as could have been. I told him, like, I appreciate that, Julian, but I'm, like I said, I'm not interested in dating men since I only have someone. And I told him that it was nice to meet you, but I'm sure probably go to spend time with my friend Tony. So, I left and went to find Tony. Tony were at the bar by himself talking to Carlos, and I even told Carlos and Tony how I felt around Julian. And, and also said what he told me, and Carlos, who was actually a decent good guy, like myself, straight, he told me that Julian actually had been there a few times since apparently when he was new in town. But he was trying to make remarks to other guys, and some of them actually felt a little bit uncomfortable around him. Despite he was a good-looking and seems to be a very good guy, but a lot of things about him was, doesn't even add up. And it turned out Tony actually had once run into him, and Julian decided to ask him out, but Tony said no, because he wasn't really looking for a relationship or even a hookup. He was just not really being in a relationship at the moment since he, he was actually in one earlier, but they were no longer working out. So he had decided to just to focus on himself and work and his friends until he was ready to be dating again. But Julian didn't take that friend he didn't take that that so good actually. And According to Tony's words, he was a little bit upset, almost yelling, Why can no guy ever give me a good reason? Or even give me a chance? And then he just left the rest of this bar, and I told Carlos that they should probably have the Bowser or the rest of the staff being at least aware that if Julian had that reaction to my friend Tony, there is no way to have been saying how he would react towards other people in the bar. And Carlos nodded and said that he would make sure that the others are aware of this. So, the rest of the evening, I didn't see much of, of Julian, even though I know that he was there, but I did see him a couple of times, but as he was just looking at me, and he smiled and nodded, and... But just before both me and Tony left, he actually came up to me and gave me a piece of paper and said, if you want to talk, just call me. I actually was given his number and he thought I was going to hook up with him. But Tony said, Julian, he is not interested in you. He has a woman in his life. But then Julian was like almost angrily said, he has no girl. He's just lying. He's just interested. He's just hard to be in playing get. In fact, he has been flirting with me the whole time. I was dumb about it. And I didn't even say a word. Me and Tony, we paid for our beers and we just left without even looking at him. 
And in fact, I even took the note that he the note that he gave me and threw it in the trash just by the door, and that made him probably even angrier. He's like, How dare you? I just turned around and said, Julian, I was never flirting or never interested, so don't give your in my mind that it was never like that. So I decided to skip not going to the bar for the next couple of days or rest of for about a week. Since I know that Tony is frequently going to the bar just to hang out with some of his friends there. But when sometimes when he asked me if I want to go, I said, nah, not really much interested since me and Eva had decided to spend some more time. And this was around the time when Eva actually moved into me with my small apartment. And everything was just going well. But I did start to notice some strange things happened. And one morning, I actually found my car tires, all four, had been slashed. I was dumbfounded. Who would even do this? I had no bad, I don't have any enemies on one of the neighbors and the landlord. I was to say, he was an incredible guy. And then I didn't even have any enemies at all. I was like, who would even do this? And I didn't have any bad exes or no bad relationships in the past. And to be so bold, I'm saying, Ava, she has nothing to do with it either. So I even ask if she has any bad boyfriends that was crazy and want to do this. But she said no. She had always ended her past relationships in a good terms. And I should mention that I actually had met at least two of her ex-boyfriends. Both real decent good guys. So I actually believe in that. So I had to change all my tires. And it was not only that. One next morning, I actually wake, walk up to my car and find a note. It says, you don't love her. You love me. But it wasn't signed by anyone. Or at least I thought that. I was really surprised. Who can this actually have been? I had no ideas. But I did actually tell, actually did tell both Eva and Tony and the rest of my friends about this. And all of them were actually a bit concerned if something had happened. They thought, have I did said, said something or done something to anyone to make them start upset? But who could it have been, I thought. I mean, this town that we were living had like, what, almost 20,000 people? It's hard to be, actually give any exact point who they can actually be in. And uh, it was not like from, from work either. I have a very good friends at, the, at, my, at my workplace. And I have no idea who it could have been. So the most of my friends actually suggested I put the car somewhere else and hope that that would stop. I tried that for a couple of days and nothing happened. So I thought, now that has been at least a few days, I went back to put my car outside the apartment building. And I actually woke up in the middle of the night of my car alarm was going off. And as I was running to, the, to, the, to the, my window that was facing the street, I saw someone running away from my car in a dark hoodie. And it was dark. Despite there was some light outside, I couldn't see exactly who it was. But as I did notice, my car alarm was going off, like I said. And I have no idea who could have done this. So I, I grabbed, I put on a shirt and put a, a pair of shoes and just ran out in boxers and t-shirts. But this was during the summertime, so it wasn't like I had to be worrying about the cold. I saw that someone actually had smashed my... Back wind, back sheet window with the car, and even the front window, and left a note like, "This is your last warning. You will be with me. Dump that." And I, it's so a word I won't prefer one not to be mentioned. I was now dumbfounded. I was horrified. Who did this? Who has been doing this? And at it at work. I actually told it to some of my co-workers, and all of them were actually equal concerned. Who were doing this? They all told me I was a very good, good-looking guy, far-liked. 
I had no enemies of my old friends from school, work, nowhere. But one of my co-workers actually suggested that I should put up a camera by my window and I'd have it at least on my both daytime and night vision so at least I could have this caught. I actually had, they even asked me if I had presented this information to the police. I actually had. But not the other previous events because I first wasn't really sure about if they was even related. But think about it. It actually had to be. First the tires, then the strange note, and now this, my three, two of the windows of my car have been smashed. Well, at least one was almost smashed and one is completely smashed, and a second note. It had been related. And luckily for me, I saved both notes and had taken photos of the tires and I presented all this to the police, but unfortunately there wasn't much they could do. I said, well, maybe they could fingerprints on the, the notes, if there were any. And so, so they took some tests and nothing, except for my own though, of course. And but so me and Ava, we went to the Walmart. We got a camera, put out the window, and for the next couple of days, things didn't happen. I thought maybe maybe the, when they saw the camera, they were like, nope, I'm not going to do anything about it. But one evening, when I was home alone, Eve was actually out with some friends, I heard this smashing at my car, and, well... As before I can do anything, I saw flames. Someone actually has set my car on fire. And as I was doing this, I was I was actually on the couch watching some TV when I heard this. I grabbed my phone, called for 911, and well, let's say it didn't take long for the fire department and police to show up. I decided to tell them this. This has been going far and long enough. I'm getting tired of this. Because if this person is focused on me, who would not be saying if Ava could have been a potential target But this? I don't know. But some of the officers said that this is a clear sign of a stalker. But who can have it been? I don't even have any past relationships. I even had informed Ava what happened. And I even told her to stay away from my apartment, for, or at least our apartment, for some time. Because I'm trying to figure out who it has been. But then hit me. The cameras. She even informed me, why not about the cameras? I was like, yeah, you're right. So I looked at the camera with, with the officers, and we saw the person. Not a hoodie, just clear face. The police could actually see it was a male around my age, maybe a little bit older, but they asked me if I didn't know the person. At first, I couldn't barely see it who could actually be in it, but as I looked closer, it actually hit me. Julian. It was Julian that I met at the gay bar with Tony a couple of, day, a couple of weeks earlier. I was like, what happened? And how did even he know where I even lived? Sure, I mean, I drove my car to the bar with Tony that night. But he was still in the bar, and I didn't see him even leaving. So who, or at least how, could he, how could he even know which of the cars was mine? Unless that he had been driving around in the car, in his car around in the street, and like looking for it. And that might seem reasonable. So I told the police who I believed that this were, and they asked me where I, where I met him. I told him at the gay bar, and I explained I wasn't gay, but my friend was gay, and then he, I, and I went there to celebrate his birthday. And Julian actually had made some statements on, and even flirted with me when he said I tried to flirt with him back, which I didn't. And I told them that they can actually ask my friend and even ask the, the bartender Carlos for my to confirm I wasn't even doing that. 
The police did reach out to Tony and he confirmed and he could even tell them that I look uncomfortable. So they even went to the bar and they and even Carlos could confirm I wasn't even dating or even trying to, to try to flirt with Julia. But then they had to figure out who Julian even were or where he even lived. All I got could telling them how he looked like and and that the statement that he had recently had moved to, to the town and which Carlos can also confirm to bartender. So I was hopeful that the police could do something, but even though deep down I was worried that T Julian had skipped town or something. Or he had lied all about his living in town and that he was only there for a short time. But one day when I was with Eva and Tony at the bar, well, a different bar, I got a call from the police and told me that they have found Julian. And what the police informed me about Julian did confirm that he actually had moved to this town only a couple of weeks before I actually met him. And turned out he actually had a long criminal record already. A lot for burglary, harassments, and even stalking on a previous town. That was the reason why he moved to our town so that he could find a new partner to be with. Turn out, before he moved, he were in a long-term relationship with a guy. And at first, they were a very happy couple. But Julian started acting a little bit obsessive, selfish, controlling. He wasn't even, uh, he tried to, to insulate his boyfriend um, from friends and family, which until his ex-boyfriend had enough and dumped him. That was the edge when he started harassing, stalking his ex-boyfriend for some time until he was caught by the police and had a straining order from his ex-boyfriend. So that was the reason why he decided it was enough. He were to start all over again. And that he actually had found about the gay bar and was hoping to find a new guy to be with. But he was having the same statements about women are not supposed to be with men or that women are just some properties and that men are superior and that gay men are superior to anyone. There are also going are straight, going to gay bars, are secretly gay, but hasn't even come out of the closet yet. That sounds perfect, of he said to me. And they asked me what I want to do. Well, without a doubt, I said I want to press charges against Julian. And I even applied for a straining order, but I was actually approved. But then they dropped a bombshell on me. He actually had admitted in custody that he was planning to kidnap me and force me to believe or to love him. That made him to end up spending time in jail, which I'm glad where he actually ended up did, because I was when he when the police actually informed this, I was scared. Even Ava, Ava and I talked about considering just move, like leave our apartment and move town far away as long as possible. But luckily, that didn't happen. But I was summoned to the court as a witness, along with Tony. And, well, we gave our statements and testimony. And even though in court, Julian tried to explain that, that but what he said was a lie, that I was seducing him, tried to flirt with him at the bar, and I've made up all the things. But there was only one small detail that he couldn't even explain how how that was even possible. How would I even look like him? Unless I was wearing a mask, which I wasn't even into kind of things to even to make mask that realistically. So, Julian was found guilty, and he ended up being in jail for sentence to about, well, I think it was about six years, 
and my stringing order against Julian was permanently. So if we try to even break the, the stringing order, he will end up back in jail for I believe it was 15 or even 18 years, which gladly I hope that he doesn't do it, but if it does, bye bye Julian. And even though my beliefs this relationship with Ava would had fallen apart, I was expecting that she wouldn't couldn't handle this because of the fear that he will break out and killing her or kidnap me. But in fact, all this event made our relationship even stronger. And in fact, we're still dating and we are, in matter of fact, engaged. Even though we waited to get married around maybe 2024 or 2025. But after all this, I was pretty much weirded out. Tony though, well, he had my back and he felt the same thing. But after all this weirdest stalker event, Tony actually managed to find a boyfriend himself from a gay bar. And it was actually someone he knew quite well. Well, me, Ava, Tony were all happy that Julian will no longer be in our lives ever again. So Julian, even though there's no way for chance for us to ever meet again, for both our God's sake, Stay away from me and never even try to reach out to me. If you do, you can stay where you belong in jail.